Hi, this is Blake, and this is JASM for ID users. And we're going to look at how to map buildings in JASM. So hopefully you followed the preferences video that I did, in which case you will already have this icon, which is the building tools icon, which is what we will primarily use. However, just to review, if you were mapping this in ID, you would typically get the area tool in ID. JASM doesn't have an area tool, we just have one tool that we use three different ways. And you would just go corner to corner, corner, and then in ID you could double click right here and finish. In JASM you actually have to close up the area, so you would click on that last one. And then ID would use the S key to square this up. JASM uses the Q key, so I'm just going to hit the Q key, and that squares it. And then I could come up here to my presets. Um, this is the man-made presets and this is just a generic building. We don't know if it's residential, we don't know what it is, so I would just choose generic building. Again, it gives me some form to fill out, but all I know is building equals yes. That's all I can say, so I would apply the preset and there I've just mapped a building. I hit the S key to get my selection tool again, um, and that's it, so I've just mapped a building. That's the way you would typically do it in ID. As you may know, it's a little bit more complicated in ID. There's a certain clicking you have to do, in JASM, now that we have installed the Building Tools plugin, everything gets a lot easier. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that I have nothing selected. So I usually hit the Escape key to make sure that I have nothing selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab the Building Tool. Now the Building Tool is, it's similar. You still start at a corner, but all you do are two corners. So you want to get this as aligned as perfectly as you can, and then click again. And I'm not holding, I just clicked, so this was two clicks, the starting click, and then I went along the long edge and then clicked again, and now it's just automatically drawing a square for me. I click again. The interesting thing is if I get my selection tool, S key, and I click on this building, it automatically adds the building equals yes key. So I don't have anything else to do. Mapping buildings is essentially two clicks. So I'm going to get the building tool again. <clears throat> The shortcut for the building tool is the B key. Hit the B key. So I'm just going to click. Oh, so what you're seeing here, by the way, uh, we'll go over in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to hit the escape key, make sure that I have nothing selected. Most of our mapping, the buildings don't align. If you have another building selected, when you start to map a new building, it will purposely line them up. And that's typically not what we want because in rural areas, it's rare that buildings align. So escape key makes sure that you have nothing selected. So I'm going to click, go along the long edge, get it as straight as I can, and then I just pull it. And again, I'm not holding down on the mouse button. These are just click and let go, and then I can just pull it as much as I want. I'm going to pull it to there. Click, click, pull, click, click, pull. And I'm just going to get all of these buildings mapped. And that's it for mapping buildings in ID. It's exceedingly simple. It's much easier than when you're doing it, or I'm sorry, in JASM. It's much easier than when you're doing it in ID. I'm going to get my select tool again, and I'm just going to click on some of these. Yep, building, everything has the right key. Everything's already squared. You notice it draws them square to start with. So here's an example where I, these buildings actually do line up, which is rare. But I'm going to go ahead and map in some of these buildings. Again, I typically hit the, I have something selected, so I hit the escape key. You can hit it 10 times, just to make sure you have nothing selected. I'm going to grab the building tool, and I'm going to map this building first. Okay, that building is mapped. I'm going to grab my select tool, which is the S key, of course, or I can just click on that. Now I'm going to select this. So this time I'm purposely leaving another building selected. And then I'm getting my building tool. And now it's not even two clicks. Now it's just one click to get started because it's going to force every building I draw to be exactly aligned to this building. Luckily, these three buildings all look, actually that one's not aligned, but these two look aligned. So this is just one click. I'm not holding down. And I'm just going to draw this so that it matches that building. And then this one is not quite aligned with those, I guess. So I'm not going to do that. However, you will see that when you have a building selected, it's going to force the next building you draw to be aligned to it. So I would hit the escape key, and then I would map this building. 
actually that was not very good I hit the escape key to stop so if you accidentally click where you want to start and this is not right just hit the escape key so I'm going to click there and I'm going to map that building and I'm going to map this building and that's essentially most of the building mapping that you're going to do for hot in JOSM. So I would click upload and I would upload my changes because these are all perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to show you, so now that's just basic building mapping. You don't have to do the four clicks, it's just use the building tool, click, click, drag. Make sure you don't have anything selected when you do it, otherwise it's going to start to force you to, so just hit the escape key if you do, that's no big deal. So I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to zoom out and we're going to get advanced. So if you just wanted basics, that's it, you're done. But we're going to do a little bit of an advanced mapping here. Okay, so here are buildings that are a little bit more complicated. These are not just simple squares anymore. Let's find some good examples here. Yeah, so these are not simple squares anymore. These are pretty complicated buildings. So a building like this, actually this is too complicated, right? So a building like this, if you really wanted to get the exact outline, I would probably just use the regular line tool and just do my best to map it as correctly as I can. Um, you get the idea here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This is definitely one way to do it. So I'm just going to hit the backspace key and that just undoes all my mapping. You would not be horribly wrong if you grabbed the building tool. So we can see this is a pretty intricate building. You would not be horribly wrong if you just grabbed the building tool and did that. Okay, that's not great, but it's not the end of the world either. At least it's approximately marking the size of the building. That would not be wrong. You could improve this a little bit too. So the tool that we use to improve this Let's think for a second. Yeah, so the tool that we use to improve this is this cut, or it says create areas, but I think of it as the cut tool. So it's the X button, the X key on the keyboard. That's part of what help <clears throat> helps me think of it as the cut tool. It's an X. So I'm going to grab that tool, and now I'm just going to double click. Wherever I double click on this existing polygon that I've drawn, if I double click, it's going to add a node right there. Added a node. Added a node. And now what you can actually do is you can grab this line. It's all the same tool. Double clicking adds a node. But then you can grab this line right here and you can just drag it in. So I'm dragging it in to approximate. So this is... So there, that's a little bit more, that's a little bit closer, that's much closer to the actual outline of that building. Like I said, it wasn't the end of the world when it was just a big giant square, but this definitely makes it a lot closer to the actual square meters that this building occupies. However, if we find another building, here's a good example, let's, let's take a look at this building. So this building is a little bit complicated. Um, I'm gonna grab my building tool and I'm going to start with just a regular building. So I'm just going to start with a regular old square. This is the essence of what this building is, and now it sticks out in a couple of places. So this is where I hit my X key, or I click on this triangle, but I'm just going to hit the X key, and I'm going to double click right there, and I'm going to double click right here, and then I'm going to pull this part of the building out. And you can see the building only goes to here, so I'm just going to double click again and add another cut right here. And then I'm going to pull this out the rest of the way. And that's how you map intricate buildings with the building tool. It's kind of a combination. So we'll find another one, and we'll just try that again. Oh, let's take a look at this one. Okay, this is a pretty good example. So <clears throat> I'm going to start with my building tool. And I typically, so there's like a certain part of this that is just the core part of the building. And I'm, I typically go something along these lines. And then if you draw it out, you'll see. So that's essentially the core of the building. And now I get my cut tool and I start adding cuts to this. First of all, this just needs to come out a little bit. So I'm just going to, without adding any cut points, I'm just going to grab this line and drag it out. Then I'm going to add a cut point here and a cut point here, 
and then I'm going to drag that resulting out there. I'm going to add a cut point here, and I'm just double clicking, and it's adding cut points, and then I'm going to pull this out here. And that's how you draw relatively intricate buildings with the building tool and the cut tool. Again, you'll notice I'm not adding any tags because the building tool is automatically doing that. So the very last thing that I want to show you is, so here's a somewhat complicated building. So I'm just going to quickly, like I said, I generally map the bulk of it as just a regular square. Then I grab my cut tool and I'll add a cut point, drag that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and I want to make sure I don't have anything selected. So escape key, and I'm going to grab my building tool again, and I am going to do this building here. And what I want you to notice is that if I'm not careful, this starts to snap to the next building. And you'll see, so I'm just, you know, if I get a little too close to that node, it snaps to that node. If I just clicked right there, it gives me an indication. You can see a small arrow, and it's pointing to a little tiny red square. And that means it's snapping to that point. You see it changes from an icon of a building, and then it changes to a, hey, you're going to snap to this other node, which is not what I want. So if you're in a dense urban area, so you can see a little bit, you know, down here, these are pretty close together. These are pretty close together, but still probably separate. If you start running into this snapping issue where it wants to make things snap together, even though they don't really touch there, you hold down the control key. And now you'll see no matter where I go, it stops the snapping. So I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard. If I let up, it'll start to snap. But if I hold down the control key, you can see it turns the snapping on and off. So I'm going to just leave that turn. I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to map that building. That's about it. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.